uh, court team for you. So. Yeah. Hi guys, um, I'm CBW220, and I'm for my dog, and we both um, have Twitch channels, um, and our panel is basically how to become a Twitch broadcaster, and we'll do like tips on how to get viewers and things like that. So panel description. Um, do you want to become a live streamer on Twitch? And are you having trouble with viewers? Um, we'll cover topics like how to improve your channel from design, equipment, software, and things like that. So are you guys all viewers on Twitch? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Does yeah. anyone not know what Twitch is? Like I have to be. first two we are. I'm seeking that it's time. Um, so I've been a gamer for um, pretty much my whole life. I know I don't look it, but I'm 26 years old. Um, I've been playing since the original Nintendo, uh, mostly Sony and Nintendo. Um, been a Twitch broadcaster for about a year, a little over a year now. Um, and I'm on a, a stream team called Grinders. I don't know if you know who Sam Thor is, but he uh, he's the founder of that team. And um, also, I, I'm a partner on TGN for YouTube. I, I upload a lot of my um, Twitch broadcasts to YouTube. And um, I'm also a spy archaeologist. I'm the biggest American you'll ever meet, hands down. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And there's my social media. I also have business cards if you're interested. Checking my channel out. Hey, I'm Parallax Stella. I know that's kind of a mouthful, so you can call me Stella. Um, I also have a channel on Twitch and YouTube. Um, I started out on YouTube, but um, I like Twitch a lot better because it's a lot more interactive with chat. Um, I do gaming. Um, I make cosplays on stream and on YouTube. Um, excuse the blood, by the way. Sorry. Um, yeah, I got into Twitch um, maybe June because I got into it for like a charity live stream. How many of you guys have heard of Extra Life? Anyone? Awesome. Yeah, we we're doing that this year, so if you guys want to check out our channels for the 24 hour. Um, but yeah, I've been gaming my whole life too, but I just recently started getting new stuff. Like, you know, I have an Xbox One and I have a kick ass PC, so you know, I mostly do PC games right now. So, um, yeah, that's also my social media. I don't have cards with me, nope. unfortunately. So, um, yeah, uh, we both are pretty big into games. I play Tomb Raider too, but. Um, knowledge about that. So I'm mostly a Daisy streamer and in the FPS games. So. Uh, I forgot to say that I'm mostly a console streamer, but I do some PC, and um, that's how we met through Twitch. Actually, she was playing Team Raider, and I <laughs> she was cosplaying, and we both like to cosplay during our streams, so that's how we became friends. So just some facts about Twitch. I didn't expect everyone to know what Twitch was, but um, so Twitch is a live streaming video platform that focuses on gaming. So any non-gaming related stuff, well, it's not really part of Twitch. Um, it was launched in 2011, and 43% um, of all live uh, video streaming traffic is from Twitch. The rest followed by uh, I think it was like um, Google. Apple and uh, Netflix. Yes, Netflix. Yeah. And it's owned by Amazon since 2014. Uh, people do it not just as a hobby, like us, but professionally as well. People could be sub partners and, um, or just be sponsored by certain companies. And you can even have like a, just pretty much everyone I know, they have a donation button. So you, you don't have to be a partner to get donations. Um, so, how many of you guys, okay, so what do you, who are your favorite streamers, if you have any? Like, do you guys watch any specific people, like, you guys, you stick with their schedule and stuff? Sada plays. Kajira. Syndicate. Proton John. Dan Gaming. Unlucky, uh, Simply Unlucky TV. Trump. 841. <coughs> Man vs. Game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, that's awesome. So you guys are frequent 
viewers on Twitch then? Yeah. That's pretty cool. So I um I put in a category Twitch streamers into three different categories. So you got your PC streamers, you got your console streamers, and then you got the people in between who uses capture cards, but for consoles, but if you use a PC. And we're just gonna talk about the pros and cons of uh, PC and console streamers. Okay, so I guess I'm kind of the PC streamer here. So um, there's a lot of things you can do with PC. Uh, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen the different notification pop-ups, like if someone donates or if someone follows, you know, there's like that specific sound that your streamer has. Yeah, um, so you're, you can customize with that. Um, and the thing is you can get as specific as you want with equipment, especially with building a PC. Like, I have a custom build, and um, you know, people ask you for specs all the time, and also you can get like really good microphones and, um, you know, camera, so we, and you can customize the quality of the streams. Like you can get up to 68 frames per second, which is really nice. So yeah, there's the quality <coughs> pattern, really good quality. Um, I know a lot of people use T Notifier, they use Stream Tips, um, but and Night Dev, but I actually use um, uh, Twitch Alerts. It's not as popular, but I like it because you can customize everything. You can change how long um, a notification lasts, and you can use custom sounds as well. So I really like it. As a console streamer, um, like strictly console, not catch card or anything, I don't get to use notifications and stuff. But with Moonbot, there is a feature where you can see everyone who follows you while you're streaming. So if you just have that page open, you can thank people while you're streaming. Even on console. What did you say it's called? Uh, Mubot. Like, There's also like Nightbot as well. I don't yeah. know if it does the same uh, thing. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah, the one that bans you for using too many cats. <laughs> yeah, that one. You can customize <laughs> these bots that you find on the Mubot and Nightbot. I'm a mod on a, uh, a conglomeration channel, sort of a group channel. Uh, and we use Nightbot a lot. Yeah, it is really helpful, especially with links, like spam links. I don't know about links in my chat because there have been some really bad instances. But you can customize it. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, a Nazi move, Nightbot or Moobot. So it's good. Um, especially if you don't have any yet. Especially if you're starting out, you don't have any mods yet. It does a really good job of monitoring chat. So. Yeah, uh, with council streaming, we are really limited to we don't really get customization. We'll talk about it in a um, the cons with PC streaming, you know, again, you're focused on one console, I guess. I call PC console. Um, upgrades. You know, you've got to get that new GTX 970 or 980. It's really hard to get pots, parts, you know, um, especially if you don't have the funds for it. Uh, and um, requires more steps. In, term, in terms of upgrades and, like, you know, getting all your things together, making sure your webcam is good enough quality that it can actually pick you up and you know your mic is good enough that people can hear you over your game and um, customization takes a little bit to get used to because you got to make sure everything is set like it's optimized and it's harder to get noticed because a lot of people start off with PC because it's the easiest right like if you have a laptop that runs games you can probably also stream but once again with the quality um, it's gonna get you it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get noticed at first yeah, it requires more steps because with um, being on console, you just share a button and you're live. But with uh, you need a software program to stream on PC. And we'll talk about that software. <laughs> and if you're not very good at technology like me, then you're gonna have tech difficulties. Or if you if you don't home build, or, or if you do home build and you have pieces, like you gotta make sure they work well together. You gotta know about you. Yeah, I think my main issue would be like sounds, making sure your notifications are working, um, making sure that everything is up and running, especially with game volume. Um, since you can adjust game volume um, with consoles, I don't think you have to. But with PC, you gotta go into your sound mixer, make sure everything's optimized so you don't, you know, you don't deafen people. So or if you're playing with other people and using Skype or TeamSpeak, and it's like really loud and you can't really hear the streamer. So 
Um, for being a console streamer, it's new. It just like when PlayStation and Xbox uh, One came out, um, you know, everyone was streaming. It, it's still really popular. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that PC streaming is not still popular. I'm just saying that like it's just easier to get noticed because um, you go to the Twitch page and you you end up on the Twitch. Uh, Twitch page on PlayStation based on how many people are watching you, and it's just easier to get noticed when um, when you have viewers. So the more viewers you get, the more higher you're on the list, the more you get noticed. So that's why I think console is easier. And I mean, it's built in. All you have to do is press the share button, and um, it's also cheaper. You just have the console and a camera or mic, which it comes with a mic. Uh, the console does so. Um, yeah, it's less equipment. But there are cons, like, um, more people means more trolls and more jellyfishes, especially if you're a girl. <coughs> um, and also, uh, if I wanted to, like, uh, PlayStation, I don't know about Xbox One, but for PlayStation, I've been having issues saving my past broadcasts. And, um, I mean, there are a lot of people, so it could be hard to get noticed on the council as well. And there is definitely a lot less customization and uh, decreased at least best. So if the quality is not good, and I use it um, for a chroma key, I use uh, a green screen for on console. And no matter what I do, got better lights, got the green screen, got perfect everything. Still see green, still not perfect. So console is. There's like little customization. It's not perfect no matter what you do. But PC, there's like you can make it perfect uh, your green screen compared to console. Did you have a question? Yeah, what's a jellyfish? That's what I was wondering too. I've that, never heard of that. That's my word for jealous people. Oh. oh. <laughs> um, also, sorry, I should just specify that. Um. Also, being a console streamer sucks when people want to play games with me because, so the cap for friends is 2,000, but that doesn't mean PlayStation can handle 2,000 friends because after having 300 friends, my PlayStation lags when I go to my news feed or <clears throat> when I load messages or when I'm trying to invite people to parties or do, uh, invite them to games, it's like lags and loads and scrolling down. It's just so annoying. So can't add everybody. I learned that the hard way. Yeah, the trolls, like I tried streaming off my Xbox One one time and everyone came in, hey, what's your game attack? And hey, can I play with you? You know, so you get a lot of people come in just because they want to be noticed and then uh, they'll leave your stream as soon as you say, no, I'm playing with some friends. You know, so you got to pay attention to that. Notice me, senpai. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's just like YouTube when someone pulls the channel and it's like, oh. Yeah, you'll get a lot of those. But that's what my phone is for. Especially if you're playing Minecraft. I get so many 12 year olds if I accept strangers and also get people who just destroy my house. I promise I won't blow it up this um, time. How many of you guys know about stream sniping, actually? Anyone? Yeah, that sucks, awful. doesn't it? It's, it's awful. Not, it's not when they uh, target and just uh, defuels or stream off Um, kind of. That's a different type of targeting. But um, stream sniping is when you're actually in a game that's multiplayer and you know someone watches your stream. And there is a lag, but still, that lag doesn't do too much. People can stalk you in the game, and they can find you and kill you. It. Um, how do you guys know about Daisy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the Daisy store, and it sucks when that happens, especially before the latest patch updates. Um, with all the hackers and stuff, they would often follow me around, and it's awful because you would server jump, but you can't get away from them. So. Depending on what software you use, I think you can set a delay. So what oh, you yeah, do. Right. Uh, is like say because I've uh, Proton John has done like uh, online poker before with people nice. not from the U.S. because it's illegal oh, okay. for us to participate, um, and he sets the delay to like five minutes. So what we see was five minutes ago. So no one can stream snipe or anything. It's nice, but at the same time, I really like being able to talk to yeah. my viewers and you know talk to chat because that's a huge part of Twitch. You know, you've got to be interactive with chat. So. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> it's it's one of the pains of being a streamer, you know. 
and then capture cards. Um, so with the pros, you can use pretty much anything like PS4, PS3, Wii, Xbox, um, with OBS. But so when you if you're choosing a capture card, I mean you can use pretty much any system, but you're really choosing between do you want high quality and use notifications and everything you can use with OBS, better camera, better better everything versus your account. Like, I mean I'm not saying it's impossible to get viewers with PC or a um, capture card, it's just more difficult because it's hard to get found. Uh, yeah, I've heard about capture cards a lot, especially like, like you know, um, on YouTube as well. Um, so I was just wondering, um, you guys don't have to answer this because it might be kind of long, but like, what are capture cards and like how do you use them? Um, capture cards are devices that, well, okay. So I tried using an Aver Media. Do not use an Aver Media unless you're going to buy like the most expensive one because the lower quality ones, you're going to run into problems. I recommend the Elgato HD Capture, um, which is, I actually ordered that not too long ago and it's supposed to be really easy to use. But it's just like an outlet where you plug in um, any console um, through an HDMI cord or a component and it basically converts it to, um, I think it's HDMI to USB, and it basically allows you to capture gameplay. Um, I guess, I think the best way to describe it, because in OBS, I use OBS, um, is it works kind of like a webcam, so it's capturing that screen. So, um, you know, it's basically just a device that lets you capture like a console, um, I guess, comp console screen. And um, is it live? it's live, yeah. There is a little bit of a delay just because you know it is being converted, but it's not. It's like a split second, so it's still it's still really nice. Um, and um, when you stream, you stream off your. Um, you know, look at your TV instead of looking at the OBS or whatever software you're using. So, yeah, it's instantaneous for you. It's just the viewers that might experience a little bit of lag, but it's, yeah. Um, with capture cards, uh, I know a lot of people, you can stream off, like, the latest consoles, like PS4, Xbox One, <coughs> and, um, capture cards, and I, that's what I'm going to do for the Xbox One, just because if your network, um, if your Wi-Fi isn't strong, if it's not capable of, you know, running, um, running a game and also staying connected to the internet for you to be able to um, upload gameplay, um, it'll lower your quality a lot. And with capture cards, you can kind of take care of the quality control. So that's what I recommend it for. And you get to use your notifications. Are you out of almost adding on to what you said about not buying the Aver Media? Aver Media, I don't recommend buying a box either. Mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. Even though they're the cheapest, the cheapest uh, 1080p device, uh, they never update their software, their capture cards are horrible. I bought the original Rockstar game capture, it was completely totally nice. Their software is even worse. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, it, I mean, I have an uh, Elgato HD60. Mm -hmm. It is easy to use, as stated, but um, really, since I don't really have like fast internet and like, um. speed test, uh, the most I would be able to stream, I really don't have to be 40. I'll have any more love just to stream directly from the console. Right. Um, for you, um, it might be easier uh, just because you're not running it through um, another device. I would say give it a shot. Because um, I think, what, what do you, what console do you stream on? Xbox One. Xbox One. Yeah, you can lower quality. I had to lower mine to the very lowest, which is why I wanted to get a capture card. Um, yeah, I would say give it a shot. I mean, it will work, just um, you might be compromising quality a little bit. Yeah, I also got um, the Gato, and I heard that um, the 60 is just for Xbox One and, and PlayStation 4, while uh, the Gato that I have, it's you could use it for pretty much everything that I list, listed there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 only, it's, it's HDMI only, and uh, okay. even though it's 60 frames per second, there's no really big jump for 60 frames, to be honest. Like, YouTube, they, they just upgraded it, but it's hard to find a 60 frame per second, especially if you're not using uh, if you're not using Google Chrome. That is. Okay, um, it's a bit different on Twitch when you do 60 frames per second. I will tell you, like I play Titanfall. I don't know if anyone else plays that here, uh, but it makes a huge difference, especially when you're watching. Um, you don't think about it because you know the human eye can only 
accept so many frames per second, but watching in 60, it's so smooth, it looks like you're playing the game, and it helps a lot with viewership, just because they're more comfortable with it, and, you know, it'll be kind of like higher quality stuff, so. Um. So, what, um, if you're doing PC or council or patch guard or whatever you do, you have to do lots, you should do lots of research before to see if it's what you want, like if it's the right headset for you or if you even like the, um, the mic quality because I know I'm so glad that um, I was told to do this because I almost got the PlayStation of the Sony Gold and the mic quality was actually horrible when I compared it to my Razer, um, Kraken Razer 7.1. I'm really happy with my Razer. And and then I and then watch people's videos of them with their Sony uh, headset and it's like, I can't believe it. I mean, it, it's really good price and it's not bad. It's just you can kind of hear some, it just doesn't sound crisp. And um, you ask people, you know, in real life, ask, uh, go to your favorite um, streamer's page and look up what they use and look on Amazon, check out reviews, do comparison videos. Yeah, and I think on most streamers' pages, you know, you, you can look down at their channel, like scroll down, um, they'll have uh, a section for their specs. Um, so you can always go look in there, kind of compare to other streamers and, you know, see how you like the quality. Um, we both have, we both have spec um, sections. Yeah. yeah. So. For streaming software, we're just going to talk about these two because they're free and they're easy to use. So. Um, I have tried both OBS and Shadowplay. I mostly do OBS with Shadowplay. It's kind of like, it's the equivalent of streaming from your console, like using the console um, stream software. Uh, but for a PC, especially if you use an NVIDIA, um, or, yeah, if you use an NVIDIA um, capture, or not capture card, sorry. Uh, graphics, graphics card. card yeah. Um, Shadowplay is good because it works straight off the video card, um, but you can't customize it. Um, it does help with uh, frames, frame rate. But I like OBS because it's way more comfortable to use. It's very user friendly. Um, and you can customize a lot of things. You can add layers, overlays, um, your notifications. Um, plus you can have different, like you know how when you switch scenes from, you know, hey, we're just gonna start, we're gonna wait for um, stream to start, and then we're gonna switch to gameplay. Like it's very easy to switch between that. With Shadowplay, it's your screen constantly, so. Um, we had XSplit in here, but it's not very, it's not user friendly um, unless you actually buy the yeah. full version. It's, it's supposed to be good for starters, but I wouldn't recommend. Free XSplit is worse than OBS, but yeah. OBS, from what I've heard, is also worse than paid XSplit. Yeah, but it's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to? Yeah. yeah. I, I would suggest OBS. A lot of professional streamers use OBS still. So. All my favorite streamers use OBS. I think Games Done Quick just started using OBS. To stream their uh, charity streams. I see this stuff, yeah. I think, I think AGDQ this year was their first year using OBS. Oh, really? I believe so, which is why they had so many technical issues, because they were still figuring out how to use it, as I recall. Yeah, it's different. Xplode is very different from OBS. Like, I tried both, and I, I stuck with OBS because it's a lot easier. There are a lot more tutorials on OBS. I couldn't figure out OBS, so I just paid for XSplit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it works, you know. Um, yeah, it's whatever you put on. Yeah, it's just, I feel a lot more people use OBS for me, so I was more comfortable with it. And, and paid to exploit isn't that bad, it's 15 every three months. Or there's like other plants, but All the right. cheapest is 15 every three months, which is not bad. I'm just cheap, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's a lot simpler to edit via mainstream, with OBS versus console. talk about tips for streaming. Um, first of all, most important thing, internet speed. I watch a lot of streams and I don't like when it pauses every five seconds. It's um, the broadcaster's uh, internet. Um, oftentimes if people come into your channel and say, hey, like it's buffering, like um, if it's the broadcaster's fault, then you should be able to see it um, 
I think the stream will actually stop itself. But if it's buffering for you, then it's got to be your internet connection to their connection to the um, Twitch server. I stream off of New York servers, so if someone lives far away from New York or um, if they just have really bad internet connection, then they're, it's going to buffer. So, uh, but if it's if stream is running clear for you, um, in OBS I know there's like a green bar. As long as the kilobytes per second stays in the green bar, green area, it should be fine. Um, but as soon as it drops to yellow or red, you know that it's your fault and that it might just be connection to a server. Uh, Twitch servers are pretty iffy at times. Um, Either that or it's you know, bad weather, or just connections down, so. Um, also, I recommend bots, uh, not just because um, if you want to use it to help you, um, like, mod your channel, but also it, it's important, I think, because uh, I think MooBot, I'm pretty sure, counts as a view. And more people are likely to stop in your channel if you have one viewer versus zero. So I also recommend bots for that. And also, um, so if you don't know how to build your, make your own bot, um, you should use Nightbot or Moobot or one of the popular bots out there. And uh, it's also a good tool for sharing your links. It, social media is really important when it comes to streaming, so to get advertisements. I, I tried both Nightbot and Moobot, and I used both at one point, but I just stick with Nightbot now. It's a lot easier to manage one. So. I like, I like Nightbot because uh, a little more than Moobot, because uh, without donating to Nightbot, you have, you can make up to, I think, 25 chat commands. Yeah. And then once you donate, no matter how much, you have like infinite, but mm -hmm. I think Muba is really limited in that aspect of like five or ten. Okay, I didn't know that. I, I believe that was the case. It's been a while since I checked out Muba, but I think that was the case. I think I have about ten. Yeah. Yeah, commands are fun. They <laughs> are very fun. Yeah, that's another thing, um, especially if you have people who really like to chat and interact with other people on chat. Having commands like that, like little fun interactive commands, um, and they help a lot. Like I have stuff where. Instead of, because if you're not partnered with Twitch, you can't have emotes, right? Well, I guess we kind of cheat and we use commands as emotes. And I think she has, um, she has two bunnies. So she uses, um, can I explain? Um, I just have this thing called bunny break and people, three people request me to have a bunny break and I take a break and show my bunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the channel that I mod, we have, I donated a little bit. It, it's a good idea to donate even like five dollars to Nightbot because occasionally it'll take it down for maintenance or something breaks and if you've donated it'll come back to your channel automatically oh, wow. but if you haven't donated to it you have to add them re-add Nightbot yeah. yourself but um, we have a lot of commands we have over a hundred commands I think now <laughs> and a lot of them we don't <laughs> use but I'm too lazy to delete them yeah <laughs> Be exact all the time, you could just say from. Um, I say I'll be on between 7 and 9 p.m. Eastern Time or something. So it, it's important to have a schedule if you want to get a following, you want, so people know when to show up. And when those loyal people show up, uh, you'll be on higher on the list because you have the viewers, and then more viewers will find you because you have viewers. Yeah. And if you don't have a schedule, like notifying people via Twitter or social media, it helps a lot. Especially if you're running late or something. So it also helps to have a um, a good broadcast title because um, it's anything to like when you look for a streamer when you're on Twitch and you look search for a stream and watch um, you want something to catch your attention. Yeah, so instead of being like um, you know your name playing this, you know. It's Kind of boring, so you kind of spice it up like, oh, thrilling Tuesdays, or you know, there's th Thursdays, you know, stuff like that. Or I do Friday Night Friday, so that usually gets some traffic because everyone loves, loves horror games. I hate them, but you know, <laughs> um, yeah, so things like that just kind of make it, um, it's 
kind of like the opening line for speeches. If you guys are around to take a speech class, you know how your teachers were like, make it an eye catcher. Kind of like that, just make it an eye catcher. So, as a council streamer, I get asked a lot, what game are you playing? Because I guess in tiny words, it says what game I'm playing. So sometimes I have to put that in the title as well. Um, it also helps to, for some people, not all people, um, it helps to play popular games, especially at its release. I had so many friends who, who who didn't get any viewers, but then they streamed like Evolve the night it came out and got like 500 viewers every single night they streamed it. it was, so I recommend um, playing popular games. Um, but it's not possible to get viewers playing um, retro games. Um, the one thing with playing really popular games, like the night it comes out, a lot of people will be playing that. So it's kind of like a hit and miss. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a risk that you should take, especially since it's a game that you know you might be interested in. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, there are a lot of people streaming the same game. So, yeah, especially um, Twitch likes to highlight, like spotlight, you know, a game that just came out. So, you know, granted, a lot of people will be streaming it. A lot of people will be checking you out if you're streaming it right at its release. Um, so try to be talkative to keep them to stay, and try to give them your opinion, like a really good uh, opinion about the game live, because that's probably why they're checking you out, because they want to see if the game's worth buying before they actually buy it. Yeah. Uh, when you, uh, depending on what time you're stream, streaming, like on a roof, would you have to uh, be uh, having to deal with copyright, especially if you're having to get your hands on it? Um, do you mean like a beta code, or do you just mean like you you got it early? Got it early. Got it early. Um, they should be fine with it. Um, usually, if there is an issue, um, Twitch will send out an update to people. Um, I think their Twitter actually updates people. Um, like, hey, if you stream this, it's against the rules. They'll let you know. Um, but generally, it's it's okay because um, I know I can get you know new games like right off the bat, like even before release date. So you should be okay because um, you only get uh, an early release like a day or two before. So I think it should be all right. As I recall, I don't remember which games it was for, but some people were able to get it before. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't remember. There's they did say something about the order. They said that if you stream it before the release date, then they would take your stream down. Also, sometimes, like, if you have a Twitch, like, I have the channel I'm not on up all the time. Sometimes Twitch will send out a notification that'll be just under, like, the video. Oh, okay. That says, uh, don't stream this game until tomorrow. Right, yeah. So You'll like get in trouble. Or maybe in the, um, like, terms of service or something like that. It should say something like that. Um, a lot of people ask me, uh, is it really necessary to have a camera? It really isn't, actually. Um, I know a lot of famous streamers who just use a mic. As long as you're um, talkative or entertaining or have a good opinion of the game, then people will watch you. Yeah, like sometimes I stream without camera because I feel lazy, so. Uh, but yeah, still, people will come in, they'll check you out. You know, if they think you're entertaining, they'll stay, so. Also, um, some, just uh, doing some events like, uh, giveaways or doing stuff for charity or 24 hour streams, that really helps to get views as well. A lot of people do that. Yeah, like the Extra Life event, I know that's a huge thing on Twitch as well. Um, it's really grown, which is good because it, you know, it helps a lot of kids out. So, you know, being a part of that, being a part of a huge conglomerate event really helps out, um, especially since you can team up with people. So it's always good to have, it's always good to have that. Yeah, when you um, partner with people, it, um, when you do dual streams or if you just play games with people and share their voices, it, it gets it more entertaining because there's, there's more voices and, you know, more la it's more fun with friends. And, uh, yeah, Extra Life is in October, I think, so you should definitely check it out if you're a streamer. So, just a little bit. Um, about business opportunities. It's not just a hobby. People can get partnered. Um, for being a partner, you have to have like 500 viewers or, um, consistently or just be unique. So I know a lot of um, streamers who, who don't have a lot of viewers and they still got partnered. 
Yeah, sometimes it's about just your material. It's all about quality versus quantity, you know? Like, you can have all the followers in the world, you can have all the viewers, but if it's not, if it's not entertaining, if it's not promising material, then, you know, Twitch can decline you. And I've also seen people with, like, 2,000 followers um, who get a lot of viewers, and, you know, they're very entertaining, they're very energetic, you know, they're very passionate about what they do. They've gotten partnered very early. So it just depends, you know, as long as you love what you do, um, you'll get noticed. Um, also, you could write letters to companies and try to get sponsorships like um, Razor or um, Astros. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, actually, I have, um, does anyone know DJ Tech Live? Probably not. He does, he does a lot of MMORPG games. Oh, you do? Yeah, I follow. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, sometimes, like, I'll stop by and, you know, sometimes he hosts me as well, and he actually got partnered with, um, Terra, uh, Terra Online, the MMORPG, um, like, the company actually started sponsoring him, and I thought that was awesome. So he was like, if I get a Twitch partnership, that's nice, but, you know, also having a separate partnership is really good, and it keeps you stable, so. Yeah, my friend Anabu, um, she wrote to this company, and they gave her a free server on Minecraft, and, um, uh, whitelisted so now all of her subs can play on her server. And hopefully not blow up her house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, for donation buttons, uh, just PayPal. Um, PayPal, having a PayPal account is free as long as you have a bank account. Um, it's very safe and secure. Uh, Uh, the donation right away. You probably want to let it sit there for a little bit because people could um, they could retract it. Yes, yeah. it's, it's not right, but you know a lot of people have done it. Um, I know a girl went bankrupt because she did remove her funds from PayPal uh, from the donation, and the guy decided to take his money back. So she kind of went bankrupt for a bit. But um, yeah, some people suck. But for the most part, um, you know, it's a donation. Uh, I actually didn't have a donation button until people requested it um, because I'm, I, don't know, I was a smaller streamer. You know, it's it's incredible that people would donate a dollar or something that could have gone towards like you know getting a meal at um, McDonald's or something. <laughs> you know, and it's like oh, you decide to throw that at me. Like so, just I guess be very appreciative when people are actually you know giving you money. Um, and um, I don't know, it it means a lot. So yes. Are there any rules or anything when it comes to like donations you have to be careful about? Because um, like I I like I make YouTube videos more and I do want to stream on Twitch, um, but it's just I know like with the donation button I read like you're not supposed to use it unless it's supposed to go to like there's like blogs or something like it's, you're not supposed to use it unless it's supposed to be for charity. But thus people get people do it anyway. It's just that it depends on like the is there a reason like the um, amount that no, you can't hit or. Do you mean like just general donation button? Yeah, because I, I just remember reading something about it, um, which, about like in PayPal's terms, like what oh, donations are okay. supposed to be. Well, um, that depends. Um, I think for PayPal, you can actually, once you start getting enough donations, you can upgrade to a business account, and that way you can avoid all those rules. But generally, PayPal is it's a free. Um, what is it? It's a free. It's a free thing to use, um, and even. Like, I used to run a shop on Etsy, like I tried, and um, I don't think they really care as long as, you know, there's not, like, any illegal business going around, um, as long as it's not you, like, conning people out of their money, which I think is what a lot of people had issues with. So you're allowed to do whatever you want with that money. That is yours once um, PayPal does accept it, um, once it sits there for a little bit and it is confirmed that they have converted the money to you. So, um, yeah, I don't think you have to worry about that. Um, Unless it's a charity event, which I usually take away my donation button, like my personal donation button, and put in the uh, like extra life button so they can just donate straight to there. So, yeah, you should be okay. <laughs> PayPal does take a, per uh, a fee. Like every time you get a donation, it takes like a percent. Um, I tried using StreamTip, I think it was, and they also charged me. Um, so, if you're going to be charged and you're a console streamer, you might as well just stick to not do alerts. Yeah. Um, I use uh, Twitch alerts, or yeah, Twitch alerts, and um, it takes about ten cents um, per donation, and um, PayPal takes about ten percent of a donation. So um, 
it's not terrible. You know, it's a small it's a small price to pay. So. so dealing with trolls, something that we both have experience with. Um, I guess the most important thing you can do is just to ignore them, don't acknowledge them, because um, that uh, having a reaction feeds them and it makes them continue to do what they're doing. Also, have mods. Yeah, mods can take a lot of heat off you because you know if they see that you ban someone, they can come back and be like, "Why did you ban me?" You know, they can pinpoint you. And having mods to kind of your first wall of defense helps a lot. Um, also be careful who you mod, make sure you know them well, because some trolls would ask to be a mod just so they can ban all your viewers. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I tend to tell people that if you ask me for a mod, I will not give it to them. Because um, generally people who ask are people looking for that recognition, right? Like, oh, I want to sort by my name. It's, it's, a good, um, it's a good thing to have just to be able to talk to you know, someone that you think could be a potential mod and get to know them first. Kind of be friends or at least um, know that they have your back. And don't be afraid to take that sword away if you have to. Oh yeah. I've had to do that a few times on the, on, it's called the, the underscore lurkers. I've had to do that a few times. And you don't want to mod too many people because then there'll be a sword ball and all your viewers will have all the mods. So you want to um, be selective. Make sure there's no hard feelings beyond the mod people, things like that. And, um, um, yeah, with modding, most of my mods, they are lurkers, so that chat doesn't feel uncomfortable that there are people who are patrolling the chat, you know? Like, we want it to feel open, so what my mods do is usually if they see something toxic, they'll, they'll time the person out or ban them or, and explain why they did. And I do a one chance system. You know, people come in and uh, they say something kind of vulgar or if they say something that's offensive, you know, we give them one chance because maybe they're a really good person um, and they just didn't know how to get the attention of a streamer. Um, so we do give them the one chance and if not, they're, they're gone. So. Yeah, I, I, I have a reputation of giving people more chances. <laughs> I'm just. Um, one of those let's say, pushovers. Um, people will be like, You sound like a kid, or you look like making the eyes, or Vanessa Hutchins, or something like that. <laughs> I'm just like, Whatever. And then if they keep doing it, then I'll either time them out or ban them. I'm kind of the opposite. Like, I, I will kind of step down and I will automatically, I will ban them myself, and I'll be like, I, I might leave a sassy comment, actually. You know. Use the ban hammer. <laughs> yes. Don't be afraid to use that. No. It is your stream. Um, if it was anyone else's and you're a mod, you would have to apply to their rules, but it is yours. Um, so uh, make sure that it stays yours because I do have mods who play games with me or they talk a lot and they could sometimes steal like spotlight, I guess. Being girls, uh, people always come to our channel and complain that we get views, um, and they don't. But it really, it took us, it took me a year to get the amount of followers I have now. So that's, I mean, that's why I have views, because I have followers, because I built it, and it takes time. And um, if you were to look on Twitch right now and check out the 10 most viewed uh, streamers right now, Pretty sure only one or two of them are women, but it is true that cute women could. It is easier for them; they don't have to work as hard to get noticed. But you don't have to be a girl. You don't have to be cute. And it's about the people who stick around that actually matter. You know, one night you can get like 500 viewers, the next day you can get like 10. And um, you know, it's we could get into detail about this, but you know. Um, it's just about who you are personal, personality-wise. Um, yeah, it, it's always interesting to see the type of people come into um, a male streamer's chat versus a female streamer's chat, you know, like, it, it's very different, so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we were getting into the topic of being a good streamer. Um, just, like, uh, you could either do tutorials when you when you stream, or just have good opinions on the game, or be entertaining. 
or just most of all, be interactive with your chat as much as you could. I know it's really hard. I, um, my friend Sam, uh, the, the founder of Grinders, he, he has like 70,000 followers, but he's still able to read the chat like really well. And I was like, dude, how do you do that? Because like, I'm like multitasking and it's really hard for me. And I don't, I only get like up to 100 people, but he gets like a, a hundreds and he's able to keep up with the chat. And he said it took a lot of time, but it, I mean, if you might as well be watching YouTube if you're not interactive. Um, yeah, I know a lot of um, professional streamers, like a lot of big ones, like um, Cryotic. Anyone know Cryotic? Yeah. yeah. I know he's been on YouTube. He's actually the reason why I got into YouTube. But um, uh, I know that for him, he reads very little of the chat. And um, he'll call out, you know, if someone subs to him, he'll call that out. But he keeps the chat, um, chat interaction very minimal. Um, because for him, it's all about playing games. It's about providing the material. So there are some different types of streamers, but um, I know that if you want to be more chat interactive, it's going to be different from YouTube. It's it's very important that you talk and you read off your chat. So it also helps to do giveaways, um, or you just be really good at the game. I know, like uh, this guy, he he just he just plays The Binding of Isaac, and he gets he does like 200 runs and no dust, and he gets tons and tons of views. So. Just being skillful, maybe doing speed runs or something. And also, one of the most important thing to do as a streamer is to watch other streams and to make friends with people. And um, I mean, you meet friends with common interests, like so. There's no blues. That's how the lurkers came into existence. Mm -hmm. We were all. All but a few of us were originally lurkers on Proton John's streams when he wasn't streaming. And then one of us decided to make a channel. And so we all, a lot of us either three stream through the channel or stream on our own and host it on the lurkers. That's really cool. Yeah, so we all, without Proton John, none of us would, um, like we wouldn't even be a group. Um, so another thing I wanted to cover was um, just channel design. You want it to look appealing, you want it to be um, simple, not too fancy. <laughs> um, um, this is uh, hers, actually, screenshot of her. And um, you see that she has a, a little logo that represents her. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I um, generally, some people will offer to give you um, like stream overlays or buttons like this. Um, I didn't have any offers, so I actually did this myself. Um, and it's very easy to use, especially with, uh, it's very easy to do, um, especially if you have a base template. And uh, if you use GIMP, GIMP is like a free Photoshop, and it's fairly easy to use. So. Also, KickMonkey, I really love that website. It's kind of like a little bucket, but it's really cool to use for buttons, too. I have a question. I have an, I just recently made an account, mm -hmm. and I've been trying to figure out how to actually go, because like in the About Me section, I think there was like some kind of limit as to what I can write, and I was always wondering how people had all oh. that. Um, like in the different um, like on your, sections? On your profile, per se. Oh, okay, on your profile, like your description, um, right. it's, it is limited to a certain amount of words. So is this different from? Yes. Um, this is if you go into your channel and you know your video pops up and your right. offline image, you scroll down and it's like channel panels. Okay. Yeah, so you can write a little bit more there. Okay, that explains that. Yeah. I was so confused. No, I was confused about it too. So. No, thank you. Yeah, no problem. So, and also, if you plan on taking streaming seriously, you should have like um, maybe a name for your followers. Like, her name is Ellen. Just give me a five minute warning. Her followers are uh, the Stellar Rangers. Go, go, Stellar Rangers. And yeah. um, Sam, this is also a design I like. Um, he calls his the Sampires. Uh, I call, um, I don't really have a good Twitch name. My name is CBWT20. People call me CB for short, 
so I call my followers the Sibians. <laughs> um, this guy call me Wiz. Uh, he calls them wizards, and so it's themed like wizards. And then my friend Anna Boo, bananas, Anna banana, bananas is the name of her fans. And then War Witch. Um, I recommend like making a cute logo for yourself. Um, cute chibi animation. I like how YouTube does their title cards, you know? You want to have something kind of eye-catching and um, kind of having like your own little, um, I guess your own little um, avatar is good because people can recognize that and they'll know that it's you. If you take streaming seriously, I recommend joining a Twitch team. It's really important because um, you'll show up on the team page so you'll get viewers and everyone on your team will see you and um, their viewers, so it's like your guys are exchanging viewers and um, also making friends is really important. Um, not just with other streamers, but with partners as well. And to dual stream because it gets more entertaining. And when, when you network, networking is like the most important thing you can do is streaming. People will host you, retweet you, and shout you out. So you really want to make friends with everyone on Twitch. And also Twitter is a really important tool. Um, you could uh, have it synced up to your Twitch so every time you go live, it will tweet it. And also tagging helps some people, like tag, share my Twitch or Twitch share or um, tag your friends when you stream and ask people to retweet you while you're live. So it gets, Twitter is really popular when it comes to Twitch. Yeah, and like Twitch will automatically send out an email alert to your followers when you go live, but Twitter it's automatic. So um, Twitch generally has some issues with getting their emails across as, as fast as possible. So I recommend guiding your fans to Twitter. So if you want to save your broadcast, because YouTube's kind of important if you really want to save things and um, just to get people to check your channel out based on your YouTube, uh, you could either export it, which but it will decrease the qualities. Um, or you could um, use Twitch tools. I re we recommend Twitch tools for um, saving past broadcasts. Uh, you should probably highlight it on uh, your broadcast so that um, people who just check out your channel, they can kind of get a, a sense of what, what you do, what games you play, how you are. And um, so you could do this under your settings. Um, Make sure it's archived broadcast. It will only save for um, two weeks unless you highlight it. And then it'll save forever, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. It used to, you used to be able to go to the video, the past broadcast, and push save forever, but yeah. they removed that a couple months ago. I think. Yeah, but you can still cheat the system. You can just highlight the entire thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I do when I stream on the yeah. Looper channel. I just highlight the entire stream because I'm yeah. part of the Trinity. I can do whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> all just have fun when you stream because then you won't get burned out because you're paying too much attention to numbers just have fun because when you have fun your viewers have fun if you're sad if you don't want to play a certain game don't play it play what you love just have fun yeah. and be yourself mm -hmm. don't try to be someone else mm -hmm. and network and remember it takes a while to build a following to build viewers to build so make friends with your viewers and then they'll be loyal and introduce more people to your channel yeah like play whatever you want to play no matter what people say to play um maybe eventually when you have more of a following you know when you get bored of a certain game like take suggestions but remember they are suggestions it's your channel play what you want to play because people want to see you have fun if you're not having fun they're not going to stick around so um did you um, one question is um, how often is that where a twitch streamer adopts kind of like the persona or um, I'm sure it's not uncommon. Um, I'm sure you guys know about Casey Tron. <laughs> if we're going to talk about one, um, do you mean like making a completely separate persona, like like giving yourself a completely different name and just acting? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think some people have done that, and you know, I think it's it would be unique if you wanted to do that. Is that something you're interested in doing? That is yeah. also. Um, I've seen some Twitch streamers where it's kind of hard to tell if it's them or it's them acting. Oh, whatever makes you comfortable. Right. Um, like
like I've seen some people who do cosplay streams and you know they just pretend to be that character and they are that character at home. So I guess it's kind of the same thing. Um, yeah, it's your stream. Um, it's your own little hub, so you can do whatever you want. Um, I guess for those, I would suggest maybe watching their streams a little bit more, so you can actually tell if you know if it's legit or if you know they're doing this persona. But even then, it's it's their own. So. I couldn't help but keep thinking of the games. I'm sorry. Persona. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played it myself, but I watched a couple of plays so. of. Persona 3 FES and Persona 4 Golden, so. Yeah. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to approach us after the panel. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're both on Twitch and YouTube, like we yeah. said. I don't have any business cards. But, yeah. I have business cards, and um, I, I shout her out a lot, so there's no way you can't find her if you're on my channel. Yeah, we plan on doing more dual streams, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you guys have any questions? When you stream, do you, this is to both or either, do you mm -hmm. do predominantly just you, or do you sometimes have someone in like a call, so you have the dialogue? It depends on what game. Um, if it's a single player game, I definitely play by myself, but um, I actually have a team that I play with for Titanfall or, you know, certain FPS games, and um, maybe if I'm, you know, for 24 hour live streams, we've both experienced this, we've had people on call so that we wouldn't fall asleep. <laughs> Um, yeah, like it, it depends on chat while you're thing. going off and getting coffee. Yeah, yeah. It's um, good at writing to switch it up, multiplayer, single player. Yeah, it's really good. Um, but once again, it's however you're feeling. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I feel like playing with people, sometimes I'm like, mm, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, like I'm no. taking a break from Daisy because there's only so much, so much of looting that you can take, you know? <laughs> so much screen, so much, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, stream sniping you can take. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you guys for joining the panel.